bumper to bumper yet. But I want to get into a dynamic that I don't know where it begins, but let's just say with the creation of the United States, the expansion westward known as Manifest Destiny, which they fed to the American masses to make it as though it was some sort of God-ordained um, theme that was supposed to take place, you know, and they kind of whitewashed the fact that there was a genocide on this continent that previously had millions of Native Americans, that we broke every single treaty we had ever signed with the Native Americans. Um, it is a story of expansion and a lot of the, of course, and a lot of, and conquest and empire. A lot of the people that partook in it did not believe that they were uh, expanding an empire. They're doing, you know, they came from all different parts of the world. They had no idea of some like continental racial group like whites or something taking over. It was individuals that often, you know, were in conflict with each other, Irish against, or everyone against the Irish type thing. But anyways, it all took place. There were various things. I mean, there were like whites and blacks at one time way back were both kind of slaves. And um, there were early rebellions, and to stop this sort of unity, they started giving whites and blacks, they started treating them differently, giving whites more privileges. And the same thing that Rome did when Rome would conquer a certain area, take a special group, give it special, um, just treat, treat different populations within the same country or state differently, divide them amongst each other, and therefore weaken the power of any unified front. That, whether by design or accident, they, they borrowed that once blacks and whites who were both oppressed on the continent started coming together. Um, into the Industrial Revolution, whites were still oppressed. The meat factories, like in Upton Sinclair's, they didn't only process the meat, they processed the workers, just chewed them up and spit them out in their whole families. And that was after America had conned them to come over here. And people in New York, con men, would strip them of their wealth you know, using whatever subterfuge they had uh, perfected before the arrival of that said family of immigrants. Um, it's, a, it's a long, checkered history. A lot, a lot of victims of every race. Imagine just when they changed the laws or they changed the requirements at Ellis Island to limit the amount of immigrants coming in from, from South and, and East Europe. Imagine what it would feel like to take this boat ride. And these boat rides, they were jam packed with people. This was not some, you know, pre iceberg Titanic boat ride. This is more like something you would, you would think out of uh, slavery times where people just, you know, aren't, aren't accessing restrooms and it's very, very poor, bad conditions. Imagine taking that ride, which could take a month, only to be given some biased test and then shipped back. And you may have already sold everything. Now imagine if you took off the boat and before, who knows if they had, you know, that, uh, what is it called when you, when you can't um, punish somebody by, that were crime in the past by new law. It's like post facto, um, ex post facto. I don't know, but imagine if the you know, I'm sure the laws had changed before everyone heard about it. So they didn't even know that they were going to be subject to this exam. And now they get kicked back. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking story. But that is a tangent. I digress. Forgive me. Um, the thing is, we have had exploiters and, you know, in school they teach you about Shays' rebellion where he uh, he was fighting in the Revolutionary War, came back, wasn't paid, had his house stripped from him, seen, and the same thing happened to a pregnant woman, her house taken from her. She was subsequently made homeless and he got his old, you know, army pals together and was like, you know, fuck this. And then they tried to stop him and all the militia's like, no, they're right. And so they instituted um, the Constitution, which gave the federal government more power so they could have their own army to send anywhere they need within the lower 48 or whatever it was at the time, you know, however many states they had at the time, into those locations with pretty much foreign troops, kind of like NATO today, to quell any just rebellion in America. The National Guard is what they're now called. Um, I mean, 
our own history books talk about it. They just don't really connect the dots. But, so yeah, an empire. The thing is, and there are letters and stuff that reference this. America wasn't first at basically anything. We have like, what, the fifth biggest economy and yet we claim we can't afford health care, you know, while they make pills cost $50 a pill or, you know, insulin is exorbitant amount of money just completely ridiculous and then tell us we can't buy drugs from from you know Canada because they might be harmful where you know the Canadian middle class right now is doing better than ours and they have socialized medicine and that is on on a piece of land that is much colder with mountains all around it not the rivers that can expedite uh, trade and not easy roads and it's just um, you know the population grant is much smaller but the land is much less favorable much less farmland, the resource, res less resources, and yet they're doing better. And that's a that's a story, that is a consistent story, and, and that's what I want to touch on, the secret history of the American empire, and it is one of sabotage. We have gone around the world, namely the CIA has gone around the world sabotaging good leaders, taking good leaders out maligning them um, there you know is proof that they infiltrated our media to feed us lies to make us believe they're being done for other reasons that these were bad people but really they were just bad to the imperialists that wanted stuff that was not theirs rich as hell wanted more were willing to kill good movements progressive movements good people in order to obtain that increase in their wealth and power. These are sick, disgusting little people. And unfortunately, going back to our education system, our education system was built by similar people not to inform a populace in order to expedite democracy or anything like that, but rather to control the populace with certain information. and. and and to create a kind of a unified American instead of having all these different ethnic groups still identifying with each other and still cautious of any controlling power that's above them. You know, so the power above them was painted as, as noble. And that's why none of our forefathers can ever be questioned, even though, you know, they were slave, slave owners. The only slaves that... Um, Jefferson let go of were the ones related to him that came out of him raping the slaves and whether it was rape or not he was in a position of power and they were freaking slaves and they weren't released only the ones that were blood related to them were lead he raped them you know why is that it even isn't even spoken about um, you know and if we want to talk about well relative times moral relativity or something like you know, back then it was just okay, then, well, how do we rationalize killing people in other countries over our own beliefs, you know? In the Middle East, they're not free. Women have to wear veils. Well, a lot of that extremism, or all of that extremism, was propagated by the American dollar, by American intelligence. But not even going in that direction, just talking about the different dress codes, guess what? If there was another society of nudists or completely gender equality where women were allowed to walk around with their breasts hanging out, they would look at us as oppressing women. It is all relative, but at the same time, when you are taking people and basically encaging them, making them your property, that is pretty obviously Anything obviously is questionable. Eating meat and killing millions of animals is, is in a in a factory sort of fashion is very questionable. So anyways, uh, we have been brainwashed into thinking our country is one way when it is a completely different way. And you just gotta look at what has happened. As soon as we took over this land from one ocean to another, kicked new 
kicked Mexico out of California and stuff, you know, that they had for 50 years after we helped them take it from Spain. As basically, as soon as we were done doing that, we started looking at other countries and we started going after Spanish possessions, their islands, um, you know, Puerto Rico, Cuba, the Philippines, Guam. Uh, you know, and we went and divided up the Samoas with Britain and Germany, I believe, at the time. We have American Samoa. These are imperialistic actions. Hawaii. This is empire. And we started that as soon as we stopped conquering states. So, no, we do not fight for freedom. We do not take this shit over for freedom. In a lot of ways, the, the natives on the eastern side of the United States were much more progressive. Their citizens were much more happier than ours today. We should not, it is a mistake to equate greatness of a civilization with power because power is often abused. As the saying goes, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So how are we ever going to equate power and greatness when power begets corruption? Why not Let's equate gr greatness with how happy the citizens are. That is logical, but we do not live in a logical world. We live in a world where that might be called fake news because that is what they are, are after, logic and truth, because they're, they have built a, and by they, of course, I'm oversimplifying, but there has been built a national myth and the saddest thing or ironic thing is a lot of the people in power don't even know this myth was ever created they are products of the myth and they go on propagating the myth and they are captivated by our intelligence agencies and I'm about to come up on more traffic um, I'll get back to you so yeah, these guys, these people connected, you know, with whatever, they're congressmen or they're some sort of expert that the media says is an expert. I don't think all of them are disingenuous. I think they really believe the bullshit coming out their mouth. They really believe that Russia is and has been the aggressor. Like they don't know the history of the Ukraine they don't know the history of America and how we sabotaged Iran getting safe energy and how we took out their democratically elected leader in 1953 and you know that Libya had the largest man-made water um, 35 billion dollar um, project to bring water a lot of water to their people which they believed would would sustain Libya for like 4,000 years that's not even talked about and water is a very precious resource take away water you'll see how much you care about what nice car you have what nice house you have what nice anything you have they're basically worthless water is very precious diamonds are a f joke and if you believe diamonds are precious you've been had by the de bears whatever rothschild owned the bears diamond company that own the vast majority of mines that limit the supply of this rock that can be made in a freaking lab and has no practical use within society no no real need unlike gold unlike silver which you know their properties make them valuable Gaddafi gave these loans of $50,000 to every newlywed to get a house. Owning a home in Libya was considered a human right. You could not be a renter in Libya. Now, who's not going to like that? Are you not going to like that? Even for me, if I owned rented homes, if I didn't, I would want that. I would give that up. So other people did not have to feel that the whole world did not have to feel so entrapped by excessively high 
monthly rents that people collect passive income on and the government collects passive income in America through property tax on. In Libya, nobody was taking your home. Um, they had free medical. The medical, you know, was not good, especially, of course, when sanctions are there. Sanctions, like, let's say sanctions are there and you want to help out people in Libya or whatever and you send medical stuff to them, you can end up in one of America's most secretive prisons where they hold Islamic fundamentalists or whatever, quasi-terrorists, along with animal activists and environmental activists. You would end up there if you sent medical supplies to Iraq for children, whatever. That's, that's our government caring about democracy. That's our government wanting to free the people. If you send medical supplies to help the babies that are dying because of American sanctions, which have happened countless times over and over and over, then you will be considered a terrorist in America today. So again, the government, it's like qui sait qui s'occuse or something. You know, he who excuses, I don't know, I don't speak French, so it's probably qui sait qui you know, whatever. But when you read it, qui sait qui s'occuse, he who excuses himself, accuses himself. So the person is like, we're like projecting our own bad traits onto these other countries, um, onto these other people. So we are the ones hurting, and what the American government thinks these sanctions are going to do, they're, they're going to make the people suffer so bad, that they're, they're just going to say, fuck it, we want America's puppet government in here, fuck you. And guess what, America, guess what, you government guys, you mother have played this stupid ass fucking card that kills people too many times. People fucking know what you're doing. That's why it's so much harder now to do what you used to do to get these people to fucking turn on their governments. It's going to take longer and longer, harder and harder. You're going to have to bribe more officials, more corrupt. You're going to have to corrupt more fucking intelligence officers that are working for the true good guys. And it's our money. That's why your guys' budgets have to keep going up because you guys fucking... I don't know. But, um... Sorry, hold on. I just go on super ch tangents, and my short-term memory just isn't there to to bring it all back together like it was when I was younger, hitting the head too many times. But uh, I don't think these pe people really even know, and that's just a little bit of Libya. And are there bad things? Sure, you know there was people on the in the outskirts in Libya. They were pretty much disenfranchised. You know what? Gaddafi called himself brother leader or whatever brother something like this guy was not some he, he just he had just signed something in 2011 to give all the revenue straight to the people it was over twenty thousand dollars per person because it used to get a lot of it used to get filtered through the government through social services and then right then was subject to corruption so he said, okay, to avoid the corruption, I'm going to give the money just straight to the people. And he said, that's it. No more. I was allowing some oil in. I do want to be part of the international community because I do not want to end up like Saddam in Iraq. But then he signed this thing over where he didn't want any foreign companies taking out oil. Not only that, he created a gold-backed dinar currency made out of gold it's not gold backed gold real gold so the thieves in government the banksters the old school mother effers that run our country because they can just make the money and give it to any politician any business person they want oh they just make it they can give them as much as they want of this paper money oh you want to do it now well how about now how about now how about now i'll take you to this trip take this trip you know, as they, as one of the Rothschilds is so to claim to say, I uh, control the money and I care not who, who makes the laws because how could he not find his way around it with unlimited capital? Unlimited. Those are the thieves that are exploiting us. And no, there's a hidden thing. There's a hidden, it's so deep, I can't, I don't even get into it because 
Americans are so divided that they'll just think it's like communist nonsense. But the fact is our world has advanced so much. We all could be basically living like millionaires. And I'm not talking about massive amounts. I mean, cause that is unsustainable in the long term because we live on a planet with finite resources like a petri dish is going to be colony collapse but besides that we how easy it is nowadays we could all be living like millionaires but the millionaires don't want us living like millionaires the world has been sabotaged really honest to god sabotaged that is the saddest saddest part about it and they don't even nobody knows it's happened and we even see it happening to these countries but we're always told it's about something else and so we don't believe it but they get these criminals in there that print money corrupt people just totally attack progress in every which way that's enough a uh, ranting today i hope everyone has a fabulous day take care thanks for listening uh all right goodbye